Hey guys. <clears throat> so today I'm gonna be installing well I'm gonna be really installing but definitely gonna be doing some Z1 braided steel uh brake lines. I'll do the old change because it's been a while. I'm gonna swap out a little bit of the power steering fluid. We got this stuff here. Um this is dot four. It's a little bit higher temperature, um rating at least for brakes so yeah I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start lifting the car up and uh, we'll get there but essentially I want to get the car oh focus there it goes I want to get the car off off the ground you don't have to go much just slightly to be able to get the tire to spin make sure you remove your your lug nuts before any of that and uh, yeah let's get to it so, um, <clears throat> also, if your paint job is better than that, which I'm sure you saw, you guys should probably check out Avalon King, uh, who actually helped sponsor this video. So, first sponsor, shout out, cool guys. Um, they sent me out some ceramic coating for the car, so that's going to definitely be in the future. Um, I'm going to see if I ceramic coat this guy after I paint it. Because, let me uh, move some of this stuff over here. Uh, I'm going to be doing some uh, good old Rust-Oleum paint for the car. So I'm slowly gathering all the supplies. This is just duct tape. Get some uh, good high quality 2K clear. So uh, that's going to definitely be going. So as soon as I get enough cans of each, and some good primer then that's gonna be the next big thing but in order to do that as you guys can see all of this needs to get moved out so I'm building a shed in the yard for this guy to get this thing out of here as well as all those things which are some of them are accessories for the tractor or some of them are like archery shit um, but yeah all this is needs to get organized that way I can work the car in here and basically turn this into a makeshift paint booth so yeah, um, anyway, check out uh, check out uh, Avalon King, and uh, yeah, they're good stuff, or at least it seems good from the videos that I've seen, so I can't wait to try it. I might do it on my buddy's um, 2021, uh, it's not a Ford Raptor, it's like a Ford Earth Destroyer or something. It's one of the nice top of the line Ford trucks that just came out, so he picked that up in black too. So I'm going to go ahead and probably do it on that, because that paint job is... Um, but anyway, let's get to the install. I already got the car lifted. I'm going to take off the tires first and then um, I'm going to start by uh, installing these guys. So always be careful with brake fluid because that shit will eat your paint. So I got a good little pan over here to capture all the whatever residual shit that comes out. Um, speaking of, you do need a... This might be important. You can do it without it, but it's easier and it's safer. A little nice flared wrench like this for the lines would go great because this will pretty much guarantee that you're not going to strip the, the brake lines so anyway let's get to the uh, install right so I'm going to just show you right now because as you guys know this brake fluid can be kind of a uh, corrosive agent in many cases so I'm going to show you real quick what you have to do um, and I'll show you the result on the other side because that was already done. Let me zoom out of here for a second. Cool. So and what you guys want to do initially before you do anything is you want to get some uh, PB blaster and you want to hit this bolt right here which is the nipple, the bleed nipple. This bolt right here which is the banjo and this guy right here which is the guy that you're going to be learning loose. Also of course on the front you have these two bolts right there which you can also hit with them which I already did so they've been sitting on there that'll make the removal super quick so that's the front walk over to the back now back similar thing except less bolt you have the fitting up here the bleeder and the banjo just keep in mind to keep the position of these angles relatively the same in this case it's almost like a 90 degree bend as you can see it. it's kind of parallel to the ground um, and now let me walk over to the other side 
show you guys the result. So I put these cardboard things to check for leaks while I'm working on the other side, which is a pretty good idea in case, just in case if you have a leak, it's a good idea to get it done. So as you can see, I already have the new lines right here. There we go. Same thing with the banjo fitting. I reused the factory banjo bolts. I did not use the Z1 bolts because I have heard, oops, that hit the camera. Because I have heard that, let me actually go grab them real quick. So I don't think these are grade 10 or anything. This literally looks like a piece of billet or a cheap aluminum. It's been milled. These do look, so when I tested them, you see this will zoom in. Yeah, when I tested these, the dimensions were pretty much the same. And when I checked on the forums, other people have done the same thing, so I'm not too afraid of that. So I went ahead and cleaned up the OEM ones and reused them. Those are grade 10 and they're much better quality. So the fronts, a little bit of a bigger thing. So you have the uh, banjo fitting right there. You have the line that goes behind the, behind the uh, arm over here. So it goes through here. Try to keep it in the middle, that way when this articulates it doesn't touch anything. You have this brace right here that goes on the OEM brace. You have the brace in the back, again, same position. Just make sure that nothing is kinked and everything can kind of move like this. And you have the big sucker in the back. Yep, and that's pretty much it. So again, same thing. I've uh, There's a little bit of a drip here. This might be old, so I'm going to go ahead and clean that up and see if it continues. Um, but again, this is what you want to do. You want to make sure that this doesn't uh, bleed while you're in here. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what it's going to look like. I'm going to go ahead and get the other side done. I'm not going to probably film it because... I mean, it's kind of simplistic, guys. You just take off three bolts. These clips right here can be kind of a pain in the ass. So that I will show you how to do because... And what you need for that is just a beefy needle nose plier like this guy right here so what you want to do same goes for the back really is on these there's these two ledges right here right here and right here what you want to do is you want to pivot the needle nose plier on that edge and kind of twist you see how it just literally came out it's kind of hard to see but literally just popped out right there so that guy's ready i'm gonna go ahead and do the back one <sighs> Kind of, oh, this one might be easier for you guys to see. So let's see. Again, you pivot and you just twist. Don't pull because you won't be able to get it out. And there it is. See that little crack? So that's all you need. I'm going to basically, once I loosen this, I'm going to pop this guy out. But yeah, that's it, guys. Um, so after I do the fronts, well, the front and the back on this side, I'm going to go ahead and grab my power bleeder which is uh, this guy right here. I'm gonna get this guy up, remove all the fluid out of the reservoir, and fill this up with this uh, ATE 200, and uh, start power bleeding this thing. Normally, if you have two people, then what you can do is one person sits on the brakes, and you always wanna start on the side where the Mass the furthest away from the from the brake block or the master cylinder in this case um, Some vehicles if you're not doing this on the Z Some vehicles may have that on the rear So again, you want to start from the furthest point from that block because that's the distribution area So in this case we're gonna start passenger rear uh, Actually, no, yeah passenger rear driver rear driver front. I mean passenger front driver front that order Okay and if you have somebody to help you and you don't have a power bleeder, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure that the person watches the fluid on the, uh, on the brake master cylinder and basically top it off as they're, pr they're pumping the brakes. And the person in the back is basically going to open the valve, have the person squeeze, close the valve, push up the brake, the brake pad. That will suck up the fluid from there. And doing all, I mean, it takes longer, so I'm, that's why I got the power bleeder, because it's a lot easier to do with one person. Um, you can also use a vacuum system, 
Um, they have them with uh, air hoses or you can use an air compressor to basically make a vacuum and it'll basically suck the fluid through the system. You don't have to use the brakes. I don't have that. I ended up getting a power bleeder because whatever. Um, but yeah, and yeah, that's it. You can also buy these little cool valves that are one way that you can replace the OEM ones with. I was gonna go with that, but I don't like replacing OEM like brake stuff, or at least the bolts because they, I don't know if they're grade 10 or not, and I don't wanna have one of those things fail on me while I'm driving. Uh, most of these things are grade eight or above, so it's perfectly fine. But okay, anyway, I'm, dying. I'm mumbling over here. I'm gonna start on this side again, and then we'll get to the bleeding part of this video. But again, it's very simplistic. finish this up so we got the front lines in already no leaks one thing I did is that to keep these guys a little bit separated I put in a slightly bigger nut on the back that way this keeps the line off this it keeps it off that part but yeah front's done back's also done let's see it's all nice and ready I untook the banjo bolt covers, so eight, the eight is an eight millimeter, the front is a 10. And then now I have my power bleeder hooked up to the master cylinder. Um, I tried to drain as much as I could. There is this plastic cover on here. Um, I took that off, but there's like another floater in there. So I wasn't able to take that thing out. So I'm gonna leave that in for now. We'll just bleed out all the old fluid. But I basically pumped it to about 11, 12 pounds, and I'm going to leave it there for a few minutes, make sure there's no leaks in the system. There shouldn't be though, it's already been about 2 minutes and it's not leaking, so I'm not too worried. After that, I'm going to depressurize it and uh, basically fill this up with fluid, fill that up, and then just start pumping from there. Alright, uh, I don't know if I'm going to be able to film this because it is kind of shitty and it is kind of raining so um i don't want to get anything like this full of water or anything like that if i have to rush and get everything put into the garage if it starts raining but uh but yeah that's pretty much it you just fill up with fluid and then we start uh passenger side rear driver rear i mean yeah passenger front driver front and Yep, that's it. And the back, I have a, uh, oh, let me show you. 
So the bleeder thing I made was just a little water bottle with the old IV line that I cut up on the back. So you can use whatever hose as long as it fits the nipple and it stays there. So it fits on there tight. And then this is just being held here. You don't need that much hose. Um, as long as the fluid stays underneath, you'll be fine. You can just bleed it that way. And yeah, that's it. So I'm going to go ahead and start bleeding. Um, so let's hope for the best. <laughs> so now that I have the system kind of going, so as you see, I have it about 15 PSI right there. Um, so show you the rear brake pretty much every brake is going to be the same so there's kind of no point in showing you every single one but see i already have a little bit of fluid down there it's going what i'm going to do is i'm going to release it you see all those bubbles i wish this thing would focus there it goes you can do this Close it and open it, all while making sure that the pressurizing system over there does not go under, I think it's, uh, what is it, like 10 PSI or whatever, it's the recommended. So yeah, this is pretty much what you're gonna do. You're gonna, you might have to do this multiple times depending on how much air you got in your system. If you're just bleeding your brakes normally, um, it shouldn't be too bad. If you've had air in your lines, then you might have to do this two or three times. Um, the car from the manual says that it, the full flush is 1.5 liters. So basically, each one of these is a liter. So I put one and a half in that container. And that's pretty much what there is right now. So, yeah, that's it. There's a bird over there losing its. Let's see if I can. Oh, there it is. It's a little hawk looking thing. Probably trying to kill something that's stuck behind that drain thing that's pretty cool anyways um so yeah just make sure that this doesn't go below 15 and put sometimes you may want to tap this and make sure you put something on here because that shit will eat your paint so yeah i'm gonna go ahead and do this for all four and hopefully i don't die when uh when I test this, there's like a little flat strip over there that I can drive and hopefully not kill myself. Alright, so I'm going to go get that done and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit. So, I'm back. I went on a little grand tour of my area over here. And, yeah, not dead. Um, so, now I'm just going to do an oil change real quick. Cause I gotta drive up to Tampa uh, in a week, so figured might as well just get it done and out of the way. So yeah, um, brake job came fine. Um, I bled it twice. Um, there might still be a little bit of air in the lines, maybe. Um, it wasn't really spongy, so um, it also could be because I don't have a uh, a brace in the front over here like a lot of people do for their Z1 so it could be that the firewall is already flexing back and forth but yeah everything's fine fluids brand new clean no dirty shit on there there's no leaks which is the important part um, yep so that's it um, hopefully this helped you out and uh, it's not that big of a deal just take it easy and use plenty of brake of a uh, PB blaster because those bolts are probably seized or if not they're at least slightly rusted and you don't want to bend one of the hard lines. That's gonna you're gonna have a bad day if that happens. Um, but anyway, just take it easy, go slow, and it'll be fine. It's literally like a. I think it took me like two hours because I took my time because my back's fucked up. But um, if you have a lift, this shit's even easier. You just pop the tires off, break the lines off, and done. 
Um, if not, the biggest pain in the ass is just lifting the fucking car. Um, honestly, that's what takes me the longest. Um, but yeah, outside of that, um, install's finished, guys. So thanks again for watching. Subscribe, like, you know, the whole YouTube algorithm bullshit. So yeah, go ahead and do that, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.